Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Greatest Book Never Published, the podcast where we read The Greatest Book Never Published. I'm your host, Nim, and I'm joined by... Nate the Great. And Steven. And Steven. Okay, my two my two brothers. Um, so basically in this podcast, if you haven't listened to it before, you should listen to the previous episodes or you'll be lost. Um, basically, we're reading a book that I wrote when I was like 13 years old and making fun of it. So anyways, let's get into it. So um, chapter 25. Oh wait, before we get started, actually, do you guys remember where we last left off? Just to kind of have a refresher. Yeah. Um, so in the the last chapter, they were had defeated the. the they defeated the, the blade guy. The blade guy, oh, whatever yeah. his name is. Uh, <laughs> Death blade. Death blade. Death, Death blade. Yeah. And they the guy with the they were weapons. going to find <laughs> in the Incredible Bulk's men to figure out what was going on there. <laughs> in the Incredible Bulk. Yes. He's not the incredible. He's just and the Bulk. Nate was on a date with Abigail. And Nate was on a out date. And he was interrogating her. Yeah. <laughs> and he was sitting there with his eyes closed <laughs> on the date, concentrating on reading her mind. All right, now that we got Didn't where we were, out. let's Anyways, get started let's on go. this chapter. So, chapter 25, this is told from the perspective of Nathan Thompson. So, <clears throat> your father is Lyle Crape, I say. Whoa, so he just straight up told her? <laughs> okay. Um, he is the leader of a communist organization called Snake. <gasps> He killed your mother. I'm not sure why, but he did. Dude, really just gonna freak her out telling her all this. Like, I, he just it's gathered like, all this information from reading her mind, and he's just gonna straight up like, tell her like that. How the heck do you know this? He's like, where did you get this information from? Stalker. Right, keep going. <laughs> How did you. Abigail begins to say as I interrupt her, I can read your mind. <laughs> wow. Dude. Wow. It's not even like I'm gonna hide my powers. For a little bit you know wait till we get to know each other maybe to tell you no just straight up first date i can read your mind he's gotta he's gotta impress her somehow you know <laughs> yeah. yeah that's gonna scare her off that's <laughs> she's gonna be like oh he can read my thoughts okay uh, no, i don't want that <laughs> that's kind of weird yeah. anyway how um i really don't want to lie to her so i tell her everything that's been going on i tell everything from the explosion to why i had come to see her oh good at least i didn't like <laughs> go through and have him sit there and explain <laughs> it to her. I just had, I explained everything. Yeah. At least I knew to do that this time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're trying to find out what happened to your father. She asks. Yes. I say, do you have any information that could help? Yes, I do. Well, uh, I would like to tell you, but my father would be really mad at me if he found out I've been helping you. Ooh. What does she know? How did, why does she know stuff? Oh, he doesn't have to know. How would he find out? You'd be surprised what he knows. Sometimes I think he has people spying on me. <gasps> that's, that's that's creepy. creepy. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you don't exactly follow the family business. <laughs> you could say that. He wants to turn the world to communism, but I think that is wrong. Wow. Her dad really tells her everything. She's, what, 14 years old? And... You know what? He's very passionate about it. what he does. He wants to share it with his she, child. She wants her to join in the family business. Yeah. You know? yeah. But she won't. She's, yeah, she's she's not a con. She's no commie. Um, well, that's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. She's a keeper. Um, wait, what? Sometimes I lose my spot. <laughs> How did you become so much against it? Which, you know, it's a valid question because if you're raised yeah, by somebody yeah. who's, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was a Christian. Oh, of course she was. <laughs> and had completely different views than he does. She would always try to stop him from what he was doing. I just take after my mother more than him. Everyone used to say I look just like her. So that's what led to him killing her. <laughs> I mean, again, sad. why bring it up? I wouldn't bring that up, but okay. I mean, yeah, I feel like it makes sense. Um, yeah, she stopped a lot of his plans. Wow, they they had a they didn't have a really good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> they get married, but, and then she's just he's trying to turn the world to communism. She's thwarting his plans, like. <laughs> 
know. Maybe they're maybe, high school sweethearts or something. They just thought maybe they had she to just married him for his money. Yeah, she just married him for his money. Or she she's a spy and she married him specifically to thwart his plans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she thought that was the best way to slow him down. Uh, yeah, yeah. She went really far with her disguise. Even had a kid with him. <laughs> yeah. All right. She stopped a lot of his plans. It was the only way he could be sick. It was the only way he could be successful. If she stayed alive, there would be no possible way for him to succeed. It was probably the most difficult decision he ever made because he loved her a lot. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> he killed her. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, sometimes love is a, I don't know. <laughs> confusing thing. Confusing yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's um, really confusing. But. He just loved communism more. <laughs> Damn. Deep. So that's why you don't want to give me any information. You're afraid the same thing will happen to you that happened to your mother. No, he wouldn't kill me. I remind him too much of my mother. Yeah, but he killed your mother, <laughs> so why, why does it make you think he won't kill you too? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it's like she's younger. I can, she can be like. Oh, that's weird, but I don't know. But there are men that work for him who wouldn't think twice before killing me. Uh oh. Ooh. Those are the ones I'm afraid of. I could probably just read your mind to find the information. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, because yeah, because he wanted more information about her, but he, she won't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't, she says. I don't like the thought of someone getting it in my head. I will promise to never read your mind again. Oh. <laughs> 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 Only... Only if you give me all the information I need. Oh, wow. no. Wow. <laughs> Never mind. It wasn't. Dude. That's kind of rude. Yeah. I'll give you an ultimatum. Okay, fine. You don't like the idea of me reading your mind? I won't. Only if you give me all the information I want. Jeez. Do you, are you, like... All right. Let's continue. <laughs> you know, Sam P. Has, uh, his, his, uh, his job is... His, his goal is his first... Um, well, she says hesitantly, as long as you promise to never read my mind ever again, you have my word. Now, what do you know? <laughs> this is still so weird. Oh my gosh. All these characters are just terrible people. <laughs> and I didn't even mean to write them that way. I'm just, I just was dumb. Um, he's planning something big. I'm not quite sure what though. His plan is to take over this country. Once he gains control of this country, he will then push to gain control of the rest of the world. He's probably holding your dad on his hovercraft. Oh, he has a hover. Whoa. Is it like a helicarrier? <laughs> hovercraft? <laughs> Question mark. Is it like a hovercraft? What kind of hovercraft? Like something you'd see from Star Wars. It hovers 15,000 feet above the earth. Whoa. No one has ever seen it before because it turns invisible. What? It's, what? it's, it's like it's the helicarrier. <laughs> It's like the helicarrier. <laughs> I think that it is currently located above New York City. Finding it is probably what I would be doing now if I were you. See right there. It's another reason Marvel copied you. They just made the helicarrier. I know. They, cre- they, they just made the helicarrier yeah. just to copy Dude, you. Yeah. Somehow Marvel got in my head and copied my, my you should, um you should sue cinematic them. universe idea and everything. Yeah, I should. I should. Um, they, they clearly copied the bulk with the Hulk. I mean, come on. It's very similar, you know. <laughs> Big dude that's Yeah, strong. they definitely, uh, I definitely came up with that, the bulk mm-hmm. first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll have to tell my brothers, but first, I will walk you home. It's dangerous for a girl like you to walk around in the city alone at this time of night. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, little 13-year-old kid's gonna protect her? <laughs> I look at my watch and realize that it is 8 o'clock. Okay, I don't know why that's relevant. Uh, <laughs> as we... He just looked at his watch. <laughs> as we, 8 o'clock. Like, if the time was important to the story, like, oh, there's a specific thing they're waiting for at a specific time, it's like, oh, we're, you know, yeah, gonna be we, late. We got it. But no. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so, as I walk out the door, I decide that it would be a good time to plan our next date. If you can call it that. I mean, this kind of was a date, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. You were just... <laughs> it was just more of an interrogation than a date. But mm-hmm. So I was wondering, 
I begin to say, but I am interrupted when two men dressed in black clothes and black masks grab us. <gasps> Abigail almost screams, but the man covers her mouth before she can. I try to fight back, but the men are much larger and stronger than me. I reach my pocket trying to find Big, my black can man. of mace, which I carry with me everywhere I go. I begin to pull it out, but the man grabs my arm using a certain pressure point, which makes me drop the mace. A van suddenly pulls up as the men jump in, pulling us with them. Next thing I know, they use a pressure point on my neck, which causes me to go unconscious. Anyways, that was the end of the chapter. Um, I don't know. Let's see what happens to Nate. What's the wrong one? <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good chapter. Good chapter. Bravo, bravo. We got some really oh, Nate being a dick <laughs> um, to his crush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, very nice. Um, chapter 26. Uh, this is Zach Thompson. So all we have to do is get in there, find some information and get out and get out. I said that like a question. It's not a question. And <laughs> get out. I say to Jameson and Steve, I was going to have Nate help, but as you know, he was kidnapped four hours ago. How do they know he was kidnapped? Like he, they might know, know that he was missing. They're like, oh, he has I mean, gone missing. I, they maybe went. Did they know where he was going? Like to the restaurant? They may have went. Yeah, maybe I there mean, was like a police definitely report. Definitely people. Definitely people that's that true. saw. Yeah. That's stashed. true. There, there was like there was probably place. like a police report or something. Maybe, yeah. Or like well, or they found out. So yeah, I guess that's true. Um, we are sitting in Nate's van near the alley where Bulk's men supposedly meet. <laughs> Stick of layers. Um, we are waiting till we see them. So they don't know who we are. Each of us are wearing a hood and a mask covers our eyes so they have like one of the eye masks mm -hmm. in a hood i am wearing dark blue jameson is wearing black and steve is wearing dark red that's important <laughs> they specifically that's important to their well that's their costumes. that's their superhero that's their colors, their colors. Their superhero colors i see right, right let's run over our code names again i say oh boy oh, no. <laughs> i am ghost jameson is crusher and steve is sonic so i don't think these are their official superhero names yet they're like Hard you know i think crusher. that happens later <laughs> that happens later we'll, we'll get to that though um do not use our actual names just the code names if you can try to disguise your voice leave most of the talking to me <laughs> oh batman <laughs> that's right he 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 knows what he's doing he's he's the one who wants to be a cop when he grows up so he's like he he deal smart. With yeah. Yeah. He's got the street smarts. Mm -hmm. Why, Steve says. Have you had experience with interrogations? No, I say. But I've been studying to become a cop. See? <laughs> That's what I said. Ooh. I know what to say and what not to say to criminals. Ooh. Sure you do. You're 17, <laughs> but okay. I, mean, I studied cops. He, he watched cop movies. He just knows everything. He watched yeah. a bunch of buddy cop movies. He's like, I'll be good cop. You'll be bad cop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um... What <laughs> What do we do if they don't know anything? Jameson says. We beat them up, then call the police. <laughs> I mean, Fair that's enough. a solid plan. Fair Fair yeah. Solid plan. Uh, then we try to find more leads. Look, there they are. In the alley. Right where we were hoping they'd be. Ready? They both nod their heads. Let's go. You know what I wonder is like, uh, this is clearly this this meeting place is clearly a very well known meeting place where they meet. Wait, why do they why do they meet in this place anymore? Like clearly, like I don't know. It just seems like a. It might not be a to, well known place that they meet. I don't know. They found it on the information on the computer. Which yeah, which the the I guess like top the, secret. What are they called the CIA information. So I guess maybe they would. Know. Yeah, it could have yeah. been surveilled. Sure. They're being surveilled or whatever. You know. Yeah, and they just didn't surveilled. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Um, let's go. We jump out of the van and run outside of the alley listening to everything they say. There are five guys. They are each Burgers carrying... And fries. <laughs> <laughs> they are each carrying assault rifles. 
Uh-oh. The one that is obviously in charge is standing there giving orders to the other men who are unloading boxes into the building next to them. Move faster, the leader says. We've got to get this done before someone sees us. <laughs> if you want us to go so fast, why don't you help? One of the men says. Don't talk back to me, <laughs> the leader says. <laughs> I could chew at you right now when no one would ever know. <laughs> Sounds like every boss out there everywhere. <laughs> I could shoot you right now and no one would ever know. Yeah. Pretty yeah. The boss of your job. Is that, is that what the boss no, of your job no. <laughs> um, uh, He is about to punch the man when I decide that it is time to stop them. <laughs> Why don't you let him like punch him first? Make it easier to fight him, you know. Let he him just beat each other to shoot and... the guy. Just let him shoot him first, you know. <laughs> then you have one less guy to deal with. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then if you shot the guy, the boss would have to help because then be down a man to carry boxes or whatever. <laughs> so that way, why would the boss want to kill a guy? He's like, oh, I guess yeah, now man. I gotta get, get my hands dirty and yeah, carry yeah. boxes. <laughs> uh, he's about to punch the man when I decide that it's time to stop them. I would know, I say as I walk out into the open. Wait. Oh, oh, oh I was like, what? what? How does that add? Oh, okay, because he said, no, I would shoot you and no one would ever know. I would know, I say as I walk out into the open. All of the men drop what they're doing and begin shooting. The bullets just pass right through me. That's why his code name was Ghost. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what the heck just happened? One of the men says. Is that a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whatever it is, I want it dead, the leader says. Keep shooting. <laughs> Solid plan. Prime Solid right plan. There. Bullets pass through him. Keep shooting him. Waste all your bullets on him. Uh, <laughs> Once I am standing next to one of the men, they stop shooting. My arm turns solid as I swing it at one of the men. It slams him in the face and he flies to the ground unconscious. One of the men points his gun (laughs) at me. (laughs) Points his gun at me and fires. The bullet just deflects off of my solid body. I look at the man and next thing I know, he falls to the ground and I see Steve standing next to him. I thought you'd need some help. He says, <laughs> Probably not, but with Steve his, is, Steve but... is kind of like cocky, you know. I guess. Yeah, you know, like he beat the guy in the last one. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I took him down. <laughs> you guys didn't help at all." <laughs> Even though he's the guy who just showed up the last second when yeah. um, when Jameson was the one taking blades to the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd need some help, he says. Not really, I say. (laughs) (laughs) Where's where's Crusher? Right here. I hear Jameson yell as he slams one of the men to the ground. The remaining two men, including the leader, begin to run away. I'll get him, Steve says as he runs at them. This chair makes too much noise. (laughs) Stop moving. Next thing I know, they are both lying on the ground in pain. I walk up to the leader and lift him up in the air. What do you know about Snake? I ask him. I don't know what you're talking about, he answers. Yes, you do, I yell as I throw him on the ground. I swear, he says, I don't know anything about any Snake. <laughs> it's like Homo. I don't know snakes. no snakes. I don't know, I don't know no, no snakes. snakes. Yeah, exactly <laughs> snakes. I don't know no snakes. All right. Frustrated, I pick up one of the guns that the men had and take three shots that just barely miss him. Ooh. Does the class? Yeah. I'll ask you one more time. What do you know about snake? Okay, okay. He says in fear. The only thing I know is that some politician is involved with them. His name is Lee. Justin Lee. He somehow has ties with them. I don't know anything else. Please, let me go now. No. I yell as I take a few more... Oh, no! (laughs) I yell (laughs) as I take a few more shots right next to his head. Wow. Where do I find Lee? He lives in a mansion somewhere near D.C. I thought he lived in London. (laughs) 
I thought the Lee Mansion was he's, in London. Yeah, he's, he's the Prime Minister of England, but his house is in D.C. You know? <laughs> well, he's also DC. he's also running for president. But he's also running for president. So. <laughs> so he has a house in London and a house in D.C. Wow. I should have just not included the Prime Minister thing as a plot point at all. <laughs> it would have just caused less confusion. Um, he lives in a mansion somewhere near D.C., he says fast. He gives us the address then says... Please don't kill me. I wouldn't think of it. I say, Crusher, knock him out. With pleasure. Jot his memory. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Jot, Jot his memory. memory. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to jog him so hard. <laughs> with pleasure, Jameson says as he slams the man with his fist, knocking him out. We look in the boxes they were unloading and see what's in them. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> What a surprise! Whoa. A bunch of a bunch of crime. like cri- criminal like people working for some crime boss or unloading crates. What a surprise! It's a drugs. It's either drugs or weapons, you know. It's drugs, are, yeah, right. Drugs or weapons. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's candy. <laughs> it's just a bunch of boxes of Skittles. Nose candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's nose. It's yeah. yeah. Um. Call the police, Sonic, I say as we all climb back into the van. End of chapter. So I'm guessing kicking next... Kicking butt though, and taking names. They are. They were kicking three. butt and taking names. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, with their superpowers, it's pretty easy to take out five ordinary guys. Yeah. Like... <laughs> and Nate's just over there getting kidnapped with his girlfriend. Yeah. All right. Chapter 27. Jameson Thompson. It is the Monday after the explosion happened. Okay. What, what day was the explosion? It was a Friday night. A that's Friday right. Night. It was like at midnight. For a lot in a week. That's right. Well, no, this is the Monday after the explosion. It's oh, like yeah. three days. A lot in three days. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, we just got back from school. A lot of people were questioning me on why I suddenly got bigger and wasn't wearing glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I just told them Steroids. I had a rare growth disorder that only happens to one out of a billion people. <laughs> wow. I think you should have just said steroids. Steroids. <laughs> Meroided up. I also told them that I was wearing contacts. Yeah. I don't really like to lie, but I didn't want anyone knowing what had happened to us. Mm-hmm. They've been talking about us on the news all day. After the incident last night, the men we took down told the police about us. They described it as three ghosts. (laughs) (laughs) They told about the abilities we had, the way we looked in our costumes. All day, they've been talking about us. They even gave us a name, the Hooded Three. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's that's their their team name, the Hooded Three. (laughs) Oh, I don't sucks. know. Did I actually go with that as their official team name? I don't remember. Well, we'll find out. So. <laughs> At least I probably did, honestly. It was probably one of the another one of those words like a placeholder name, but I just never changed it. I was like, I'll come up with something better. Yeah. <laughs> never changed it. Kind of like Snake. <laughs> At least we're making a name for ourselves. Uh, the whole day we were at school, I couldn't concentrate. The only thing I was thinking about was something Dad had shown me once. Something that would help us a lot in our search for him. An abandoned CIA training base. It had all kinds of equipment that could help, including weapons. <laughs> it is also a great place for our base of operations. It is hidden underneath a building on the outside of the city. The building has been empty for 10 years. I always wondered why they just left it there. Anyways, that is where all three of us are headed right now in Nate's van. Oh, okay. Just gonna get an old abandoned CIA base. Mm -hmm. Turn left here, I say to Zach, who is driving. So you say there are weapons at this abandoned CIA base? Yeah, as we already know. Zach asks. Yep, I answer. At least there was when Dad showed it to me. Hmm. But why would they just leave them there? Steve says. It makes no sense. Safe house. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Um, they probably upgraded their weapons, Zach says. <laughs> they don't really need the ones in this base anymore. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave them all here. <laughs> Ban the base, leave all the weapons. Sounds like that. Sounds like the U.S. military. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even have any security system to prevent, like, three teenagers from just breaking in and using the weapons. Yeah. <laughs> the CIA is really... High quality. It sounds like something the CIA would do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the CIA also, like, the CIA is just really high quality in these books. That's all I have to say. Um, in this book. They needed somewhere to keep them where no one... Wait, they probably upgraded their weapons. They don't really need the ones in this base anymore. They needed somewhere to keep them where no one would find them. This would probably be the last place someone would look to find unused weapons. Some abandoned... I mean, I mm. guess that's true. It still doesn't make sense, Steve says. <laughs> I'm with Steve on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even if there isn't any weapons, I say, there has got to be something there that's useful. There it is. All right, Zach says as he pulls into a driveway next to an old rusty building. Are you sure this is the place? Steve says. It doesn't exactly look like a top secret CIA training base. Of course it doesn't, I say. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, keep up, Duh. Steve. Come on, Steve. Well, like, that seems like it should be pretty obvious. Like, yeah, you know, you want it to be inconspicuous. Duh, it's a secret it's a base. Secret base. It's a secret base. That's the name. Although the CIA doesn't keep their bases very secret in this story because, um... Oh, oh God. <laughs> We know the CIA doesn't keep their bases very secret in this story because of the, uh, you know, the, the science base in the back of the, the secret science lab in the back of the gift shop yeah. that all these oh, yeah. kids knew about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course it doesn't. That's the whole point. It's part of their cover. It looks like a really old building when underneath it, there's some extremely high tech stuff. Okay. Steve says, I guess that makes sense. Steve's still like, okay. <laughs> Zach parks the van and we all jump out. We walk up to the front door and walk inside. It looks like no one has stepped foot in here for years. It looks as if the only thing that could live here are rats and spiders. We walk over to a wall where there is an electrical device with 10 buttons. Each with one of the numbers on it. <laughs> Can you just, I feel like there's a better way to describe that. It's just like a number pad. <laughs> so an electrical device with a ten buttons. One of, each of one of the numbers on it. Could have been like had a keypad. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway. I immediately type in a number. We stand there for a few seconds. Oh, so he even knows the code to get in? Whoa. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the CIA keeps a six, real six nine six nine <laughs> real eight zero zero eight. <laughs> That's probably what the CIA's <laughs> secret codes are. No, no, no teenage boy will ever guess this. <laughs> Four twenty <laughs> eight zero zero eight. Um, it doesn't seem to be working. Steve says, "Are you sure you typed the right number?" Yes, I say. Of course, I typed the right number. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this door has been opened for years. It might take a while. A door suddenly hope opens into the side of the wall. <laughs> See, I say, I told you. <laughs> Sassy. Behind the door, there are stairs that lead down. I don't know if we should go down there, Steve says. Steve's like the complete buzzkill. <laughs> on this point. Relax, I say. I came here with my dad once last summer. He said it was perfectly safe. <laughs> Have you ever actually been in the basement? Steve asks, still uneasy about the whole thing. No, I say. But that doesn't mean it's not okay. Why did he bring you here anyway, Zach asks. He actually brought me and Nate, I say, remembering the day he brought us here last summer. He told us that if anything bad happened to come here. It's kind of like our doomsday hideout or something. Hmm. Why didn't he bring me? <laughs> Zach asks. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering the same thing. You were working that day, I answer. Oh, I didn't know he had a job. <laughs> I guess he did when they lived in Montana. Um, 
He was gonna bring you another day, but he has been working every day since then. <laughs> that was he said last year. <laughs> He's been working every no, day it was since last summer. They just moved to the city last. Summer. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, he never had time. Okay, we walk down the stairs, and as we get to the bottom and turn on the light, we are all amazed at what we see. There are all kinds of computers and electronic equipment. There are guns that look at least 10 years ahead of our technology. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, dude. Whoa. This is heaven, Zach <laughs> says with a grin as he looks at the guns. <laughs> that is heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> room full of guns. All right. So next we have uh, that, that chapter. That's the end of that chapter. So... One chapter left. I know, sad. Only one chapter left. Oh. <laughs> That's why. <what> I... <laughs> keep pressing the wrong button. Oh, well. Is this turned up enough? Yes, it's it is. It's fine. Um, chapter. <laughs> chapter twenty-eight. Stephen Richards. Why would they just leave equipment this good sitting around? I ask in amazement while holding a 1911 that is supposedly accurate up to 75 yards. <laughs> is that... <laughs> he just picked it up and he's like, wow, this thing's accurate at 75 yards. <laughs> like, how does he know that? Does it have a label on it that says accurate, accurate up, up to 75 <laughs> yards? <laughs> how are the... Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty good, though, for a handgun. Well, I mean, for, for a 45, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, this is old technology to the CIA, <laughs> Jameson says. They're usually 20 years or so farther ahead in technology than the common American citizen. You think that's true? Probably. Well, yeah, that, they definitely have advanced technology, but they don't share. Um, in 10 years or so, this will probably become a common weapon. So they made all this... What, the 1911? <laughs> <laughs> that that is a common weapon. <laughs> no, that's a, specifically, that's a, accurate up to 75 oh, yards. Okay. All right. Should have put, like, a laser gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a blaster. <laughs> it was made at a super advanced 1911. It's been out since, you know, <laughs> World 1911. War since, since 1811. <laughs> yeah, since, since 1911, yeah. <laughs> So they made all this stuff only 10 years ago. I say amazed at all the high-tech stuff I'm looking at. High-tech in 1911. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jameson answers. I'm pretty sure, at least. Well, if we're going to get anywhere, we should start training with this stuff now, Zach says. We need a lot of work training to become montage. a real... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a movie. This would be where the training montage comes in. So, uh... Nate gets ki gets kidnapped, and they're like, "Oh, let's go back. Just go back to school the next day." And then well, they're like, "Oh, let's just go train train in the CIA base." Well, no, not they're trying to figure out why they're they gonna try. No, I think they're they're trying to find out what happened to their dad while also trying to find out what happened to Nate. Because I, I think they kind of know that they're probably linked. So, like, if we find our dad, we'll probably be able to find Nate along yeah. the way. So I think that's kind of there because they don't know where else to you know what else to do. I guess. I guess that's kind of where they're yeah. I mean, that's what I would assume. I mean, but why did they go back to school? Got to keep their grades up. Yeah, they're in school. Who cares? They're superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> they're super superheroes don't need an education. <laughs> no. We don't need no education. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, if we're if we're gonna get anywhere, we should start training with this stuff now. Zach says we need a lot of work to become crime fighters. Crime fighters, I say. I thought all we were doing was taking down the guys who kidnapped your dad. I didn't agree on being a crime fighter. <laughs> if you get superpowers, you have to be a crime fighter or a villain. Those are the rules. You can't, you can't yeah. do one. Yeah, you have you to can't be one or the other. Yeah. Um, then what are you going to do with your powers? <laughs> Zach says. Join the Olympics? <laughs> I mean, that's not a half bad idea. He has super speed. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna say Usain like Bolt too. I hope you were gonna say like Rob Banks or something like that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's true. <coughs> now that I think about it, that's not a bad idea. I say. I mean, I agree. <laughs> Super speed. 
Like, you don't have to speed so fast that it's obviously you have a superpower. Just, just enough, you know? Just enough to win, and then, boom. Mm -hmm. um, I might actually do that. I could be a real champion runner. You can't be serious, Zach says. Haven't you ever seen Spider-Man? With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> they, they really dropped that in there. But we, he didn't need to drop that because we already have our own version of that line. The big guy must stand up for the little guy. <laughs> or if he doesn't, the little guys will no longer exist. I mean, uh -huh. could have just repeated his... He didn't. We didn't need to steal the Spider-Man line. We already have a line like that. Okay, you have the ability to help people. Why don't you do it? Why should I go out of my way to help people I don't even know or care about? I say as I realize this isn't the first time we've gotten into this argument. And besides, I... Let's continue this conversation later, Jameson says. I think I found the training room. I look over and see Jameson standing next to a door. Zach and I walk over as he opens the door. Behind the door, we see a huge room with shooting ranges, exercise equipment, and a fighting ring. What are we waiting for? Zach says, let's do this. He runs to one of the gun ranges with a gun strapped to his back continue this conversation later what's he talking about the conversation is over once we find their dad and stop snake i'm leaving Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> he didn't say that out loud just you know. well, yeah in his thoughts in his thoughts anyways <laughs> end of chapter um so we got some spicy drama yeah and that's the last chapter of the episode as well um <laughs> that I know. Last chapter of the episode. It's sad. Um, but yeah, so uh, I guess I'm excited to see what happens next. Cause, so Nate, Nate is still kidnapped. <laughs> Nate is still kidnapped. Um, we'll see what happens, I guess, when in yeah. his chapter, if he like wakes up and where he is and everything. Um, we have some spicy drama happening here with, with Steve. You know, mm. Oh, I'm going to leave them once we... Uh, I'm not going to yeah. be a crop fighter. We got some... A cool high tech technology. I mean, so a really high tech 1911, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a futuristic gun. <laughs> it's a futuristic gun that was created in 1911. 1911. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyways, that's about all uh, for this week. So, uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned next week to find out what happens next. I'm on the edge of my seat waiting to mm -hmm. see what happens. So um, you can check out this podcast in a few different locations. <laughs> you can listen to it on Spotify. Um, and you can also listen to it on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Name TV. There should be links in the description to pick whichever uh, platform you prefer to listen on. Um, you can also check out Nathan's YouTube channel, which is mm -hmm. called Nathan Great. There will be a link in the description to that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, this has been The Greatest Book Never Published. I'm Nim. I'm Nate. And I'm Steve. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.